here. Welcome to this week's tutorial. We are making a simple but sweet moon sign and you're going to be able to add a name and this is perfect for nursery signs. Um, you could even use it for a little milestone, uh, not rounds, but milestone crescents if you wanted to or come up with your own applications. All right, let's dive in. So we're going to start by clicking and holding on the rectangle tool until all of these shapes uh, show up and you'll notice there is no crescent moon shape and that's fine. We're going to use the ellipse tool and we're going to do a 10 inch by 10 inch ellipse. In other words, a circle. And we're just going to change around some fill and stroke uh, stuff right now so that we can see everything perfectly and all of our tools work nicely. So I'm going to turn it to this nice little teal color just so I can see it. And I'm going to remove the stroke. OK, so teal fill or use whatever color makes you happy and no stroke. Uh, watch out to make sure you don't do a white stroke. You want the none stroke. So look for that red slash. All right. We're going to move it up onto our canvas and just copy paste it. And this one, we actually do want the white fill. And that is so that we can easily visualize our crescent moon. OK, so move this circle until it looks like the crescent moon that you want. This for me is too thin for for my purposes. I think it's beautiful, but. It doesn't work for this sign. This is too thick. So just find your own little happy medium. I think that that's pretty nice. And uh, once you are happy with that, just click and drag until you're selecting both of your circles. And you'll see that mine actually just happened to be even with one another. That doesn't happen often for me. But thankfully, uh, Illustrator has this wonderful tool called the Align Tool. And you can come over to the Align panel in your Properties panel and hit Vertical Align Center. If that's not showing up for you, no big deal. Come up to Object Align Vertical Align Center. All right. So click off of everything and just make sure that you really like what this crescent moon shape looks like, because that's what it's going to look like, you know, in just a minute. So assuming you like it, go ahead and select both circles and come to your Pathfinders pan Pathfinder panel and click to minus front. Now, if you didn't find that <laughs> under your properties, that's perfectly OK. Maybe you have it um, tucked away here like I do as well, or just come to Window Pathfinder and all your options will show up. All right. Now we are going to do an uh, offset path and we're going to do negative one because we want it to be smaller than this crescent moon. So object path offset path and you'll see I have negative 0.35 entered here and if you've got your preview box checked you'll be able to see um, a preview of what that offset path will look like and that looks wonderful for me. Um, let me just remove the negative sign so you can see what it would do otherwise and it would make it larger instead of smaller okay but we want it to be smaller so we're going to add that negative back in. OK, um, so go ahead and hit OK. Now, if when you click off and click back on, you have both paths selected or you'll want to come to object ungroup. But you'll see that mine is is showing up separately and that's what we want. OK, so select both, come to your Pathfinder panel and click to minus front again. OK, now we have a lovely crescent moon kind of cutout shape. Let's add the name. Here's what we're going to do first. We are going to create another circle. Not 10 by 10 this time. Remember, we did a negative 0.35 offset and it took that off of this direction and this direction. So we want to subtract 0.7 inches and so do a 9.3 by 9.3 ellipse. OK. I know that seems complicated, but basically whatever your offset was, double it, subtract that from the size of your original uh, circle, and there you are. Now, why did we do this? Well, we are going to use the type on a path tool and because we want the text to curve around this bottom edge here. But if we just were to use this moon as our path, it would disappear in the end, and we want to keep it. So we're going to make another um, path here and we wanted it to be that exact let's just adjust the make it a, a stroke so you can see we want it to be the exact same shape okay and so you'll see that this circle is the same size same shape as the inner edge of our moon and that's what we want the inner edge not the outer edge okay so now I, I, I just swapped the fill and stroke so we have a none fill and we have a teal stroke. You can do whatever color stroke you want. That's fine. Then come over here and you're going to click and hold because yours is probably on type tool and go to the type on a path tool. All right. And so when you click on that, you'll see all these tiny, tiny type all the way around the edge. 
Okay. And that's not what we're going to do. Although you could, it would be awesome. Put a lullaby there or something. Oh, I want to make another one already, but I have a, a, a design idea already. So I'm going to use Gatkin's font. You can use whatever font makes your heart happiest. And let's just make this really large. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do 200 and I'm going to write the name. Uh oh, not up here in opacity. Let's write it here. Make sure that your type uh, on a path tool is selected and you can just treat this like normal text. Eliana is the name of the child that this is for. She's really into moons these days. And um, so you'll see that we have her name, but it's going around the outside. That's not actually what we want. Again, we want it to be going along the inside of this moon. And you'll see that the letters are spaced out a little strange. So let's deal with all of that at once. So you see these two lines that are popping up here, and then you should also see another line off by itself somewhere. Click that line and drag it to the inside of the circle. And then while you're holding it down, you can kind of maneuver your letters around and it is kind of a pain. You see how it's jumping all over the place. That is not my favorite thing about this tool, but um, you kind of get comfortable with it eventually. Um, and I'm just going to zoom in so I can kind of adjust some more. And let's see here. Let's see. It's really jumping more than I am used to here. And you'll see that this other line, one of these extra lines, you can kind of see that it'll show or hide different letters depending on how wide that is, okay? So just make sure that all of your letters are still showing up. Oh my gosh, this tool is such a pain sometimes. Um, okay, great. So once you have finally gotten your words to cooperate and that they are exactly where you want them, which mine is not, it's almost there, we are going to, um, see here I want to drag mine out a little more and scooch it down a little more okay so now I'm happy with the placement I do want it in that kind of bottom shape and you can even kind of click and drag just to see if it's working where you want it to be it is so that's good um but you know what I don't like I don't like the space between this this is a script font so it's really supposed to be all together all right so go ahead make sure your type tool is selected click double click to select all of that and then you can use over here in this characters panel um there's like this little uh it's uh, it, it adjusts the space between your letters okay so I'm gonna uh, adjust mine all the way down to like let's see 30 and you'll see that now our tails are overlapping with the letters pretty well the e is still separate but we can deal with that in a minute and so i'm happy with that all right yes this tool is finicky but it gives you so much uh potential for your designs that it is worth messing with okay so once you're happy with your uh letter placement and all of that good beautiful stuff go ahead and click then to select using the direct, so, uh, use, I'm sorry, not the direct, using the regular selection tool, um, right click and create outlines. And just as always, you'll want to click to unite so that your little overlap pieces don't um, mess you up later on. Now, I mentioned that I wanted that little E to kind of scooch over and get all in there, and I do. So I'm gonna come up to object, um, ungroup so that these are all being treated separately. I'm just gonna scoot it down a little. And I like that. Now, when you go back to um, click to Pathfinder, unite this again, make sure you get the I dot as well if you've got any I dots, okay? And now this is all working as one and that is perfect. Whew, okay, we're not done yet. Now, uh, although I guess you could be, you could um, just kind of pop it here along the edge and Pathfinder unite and be finished, but I'm gonna add a little extra step. So object, Path offset path, and in this case, let's try maybe a 0.25, maybe a 0.3. Okay, I like the 0.3 offset here. And before you do anything else, when you just have that offset part selected, go ahead and Pathfinder Unite if you have an I dot or anything that is showing up that way. And now I'll swap your fill and stroke. Okay, so what we have here right now, if we don't do anything else, is we have this part, this um, the, the letters, which since right now they are a fill, they would engrave, and you have this outer part, which would cut. Okay, now that's not quite what I want, but it's a step in the right direction. First thing we'll do is object, ungroup everything, because we want this part, this outer bit, to be able to merge with this bit. Okay, and in fact, it is time to go ahead and switch that to a fill 
uh, swap the fill and stroke. So there's a no fill and there is a stroke. OK, and even though I ungrouped that, I guess I didn't have to just yet. Um, I'm going to select it all, bring it over here and just mess with the mess with the placement until I really love where everything is. And I want this bottom bit to completely overlap. OK, and you'll see that we're here. Let's zoom in a little. You'll see that this part is going to stick up a little. This part's going to stick up a little. You might be fine with that. I'm not. <laughs> so I'm going to use my direct selection tool and click to select that point and just drag it in. It doesn't have to look cute because it's gonna merge with the outside, okay? Um, and same thing here. And just make sure that nothing is poking up over that. And remember that we uh, ungrouped, so this outer part is operating independently from the letters now, which is what we want. And we want to select the moon, and we want to select this, so you can shift and click to select both of those, or you can just click and drag, whatever. Come over to Pathfinder, unite all right and so now you'll see that you have this moon if you if you follow the path of the laser it'll cut out this inner bit do, 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 all around there it'll cut out the outer moon and it's going to cut out this little part in the e now i like that if you don't use your direct select tool just click any of those points and just delete till it's gone okay now again this is a finished design if you want it to be engraved and I think it would look super cute that way so that's wonderful however I'm taking mine a little bit to the next level and adding uh, I'm doing the name in a uh, pastel acrylic so what I want to do is take the letters including the I dot here okay so make sure you're selecting both just copy and paste don't move it because you still need it over here copy paste now here First of all, let me just select the I dot and I want to Pathfinder unite it back so that it's all one thing. I, I'm scared I'm going to forget that I dot at some point because I've done it before. OK, so now what we're going to do here is we are going to make this um, instead of an engrave, we want it to be a scored placement line so that when we have our cut out acrylic, we can easily know where everything goes. OK, it's important. So come up to object path offset path, and we're going to do a negative 0.04, and let's see how that looks. Too small, so try a negative 0.02, and that, everything is showing up, so that's great. Go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to use a green stroke and a no fill, because again, I want it to score, not engrave. And before I click off of anything, I'm going to Command C on my Mac, or you can Control C on your PC to copy it, delete it. Select this, delete it and then edit paste in place it's important that you do paste in place and not just paste okay so now the cutout uh whew, the cutout moon is done your scored placement lines are done and now we just want to deal with your acrylic okay or you know whatever your second layer is going to be now i'm going to do the same thing up here i'm going to go ahead and just select that um just merge that i dot on there so i don't have to worry about it and i'm going to do an offset path here as well just to thicken it up a little bit this is a really thin font and i just don't want to have to worry about the laser removing so much of the material that my scored placement line shows and i also don't want to have to worry about it breaking or just charring or whatever so i'm going to do a 0 0.02 not negative a positive 0 0.02 um, offset path and here you go and make sure you click it all click back on or select uh, click and drag to select it all and pathfinder unite it okay just so that you don't have two layers of cuts and now swap the fill and stroke just to make sure everything is good to go and you are ready so i personally am using this uh, i'm cutting this part out of um one eighth inch white oak from smoky hill designs and i am cutting this part out in a pastel pink um, one eighth inch acrylic backed with 3M adhesive. I use 3M467 LE, I think it is, um, so that it's easy to assemble later on. Okay, so at this point, your moon sign is finished. Now I actually am taking mine one step further and I am attaching a backing, a patterned backing. I'm, I'm going to do a cane backing and I'll link the file for my cane backing um, in the, the description in case you also want to do this. But I really like it just kind of simple and sweet as it is too. So you decide and please share with me if you decide to make one of these or um, if you get the file or not, I would love to see what you make. Uh, share it with me on Instagram at the fable tree. Okay, see you next week.